Hi, I'm Ryan Lewis, a certified master inspector with Top Choice Inspectors here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We're going to be doing a general home inspection on this home today, just on the interior. Um, so usually when I start in, I start in the garage. Um, I'm going to be checking the garage door opener, garage door, fire separation wall, um, operation of the garage door opener, as including all the safety features. Um, I want to keep safety top of mind, safety of the future occupants, safety of myself while I inspect. Uh, and then I move to the kitchen after the garage um, to test all the appliances, uh, be filling up the sink with water to make sure there's no leaks, uh, running dishwasher, microwave, uh, stove, checking the temperature on the refrigerator, making sure all the outlets are GFCI protected like they should be, checking for any defects in flooring or wall, um, looking for any moisture intrusion on the ceiling that could be indicative of leaks above. Um, they usually pick a direction and then I start going through a big loop throughout the home, um, checking all the windows, doors, outlets, everything like that, uh, or a representative number if I can't get to them all. Um, so then in bedrooms, I'm going to be checking windows, doors, outlets, um, again, looking for moisture intrusion, uh, rips in the carpet, doors that aren't functioning properly. Um, then in bathrooms, I like to fill up all the sinks, test all the toilets, um, fill up tubs, test showers, make sure we don't have any leaks. Um, I test all the lights, make sure we have all of our lights working, GFCI protection in the bathroom as well. Um, they usually move down into the basement, checking stairs, handrails for safety, stairs for safety, um, any defects in the flooring. Uh, they usually bathrooms, bedrooms in the basement as well. And they usually end in the utility room, checking furnace for operation, cleanliness, installation, as well as the water heater. Uh, make sure that the temperature and pressure relief valve is properly installed with a proper down tube. And then I go over a review with the client, go over all the um, things that I found, Again, keeping a good focus on safety, making sure that's top of mind for them as well. All right, all right so starting our inside portion, I always take off my shoes that I wear outside, put on my inside only shoes, be respectful of the homeowner's property here. And then we usually go start in the garage first. So I'll be looking out for out in the garage, mainly safety. Um, the garage door is the largest moving object in the home, so we want to make sure that's nice and safe. Um, there's also a fire separation because a lot of home fires start in the garage, so we want to definitely make sure we're paying attention to that. Make sure that's intact, as it should be, and made of the type of drywall that it needs to be. Um, also, usually our electric panel's out there, so we'll check that as well while we're out there. Um, sometimes an attic access, this home there is, um, so we'll hop up there and check the attic too. Alright, so out here in the garage, first thing I check since we're right here is the fire door. Um, sometimes they'll have a tag. I um, just want to make sure that the proper door, um, either a fire rated door or a wood door of the proper thickness. Checking our steps, make sure they're nice and safe. Um, these are small enough, they don't need a handrail. Some of them do. Um, I'm going to check all of our firewall, which is this, or fire separation wall, which is this wall between the garage and the home. I want to make sure it's intact. And if we can, verify that it's the proper type of drywall. This is taped and painted, so we won't be able to see that. Um, next thing I do, make sure the lights are on so we have good vision in here. We want to make sure we're not tripping on anything. Um, and then we can also see the garage really well. Um, I'll come and check our garage doors. Make sure it's all intact. We don't have any broken hinges, any damage that would prevent me from checking the garage door or that I need to let my client know about. Um, looks like we got an insulated door. So I also want to check the insulation, make sure it's continuous and installed properly. So I was making sure all of our tracks are tight. And our photo cell eyes are at the proper height, which is six inches from the floor. Um, that's one of our safety features that we'll be testing here in a minute. Um, then I do that for both doors, if there's multiple. Um, this one's a manual door over here, so I'll manually operate that. This one, I'll op operate it with the automatic opener as well as testing the safety features on it. All right, so we're testing our garage door resistance here. So we'll start our opener down. And then we attempt to stop the garage door and then it should return when it senses that pressure. There we go, it's working perfectly. And then we'll do it again and test the photoelectric eye as well. All right, so we're testing our video of our garage door photoelectric eye. So we got our garage door coming down. I'll just put my foot in front of the beam here. It should send the door back up. Seems to be working well. Yeah, so this door here, we've got a manual door, so there's no opener. So this one I would just operate by hand, ensure that it operates properly.
And then I did notice we have a little bit of damaged weather stripping here. So I'd want to put that in my report and let the client know that they may want to replace that weather stripping. I'm going to take a picture of it and we'll put it in our, in our report and let our client know about that. It's a pretty minor defect, but I like to tell them everything. All right, so we do have an attic access up here in the garage ceiling. Um, so I have my ladder set up here. Uh, so I will take a look in there. We only inspect attics from the hatch. We do not walk in any attics. Um, for liability reasons, if you step through a ceiling, also our insurance won't cover us if we fall through a ceiling um, because this, the SOP specifically says that you do not have to walk an attic. Um, so we just do it from the hatch only. Flashlight again. Take a video outside the attic here. We just kind of take a video of the whole attic, just kind of showing all the structure as well as insulation, vents, everything that we see up here. Um, and then make note of any defects that I see as well. All right, so here's one of our GFCIs out here in the garage. So we want to use our GFCI tester, um, press our test button, which creates a GFCI, ensuring that it does trip as it should. And we always want to make sure we reset it as well so we don't leave the homeowner without power on that outlet. So coming up to our electric panel here in the garage, I always like to touch it with the back of my hand, make sure it's not energized. Um, some of them, sometimes if they have a wire touching them, this whole panel could be electrified. Um, touching it would be a very bad idea. So I always like to check that first. Let's open the cover, just look at it, make sure that we've got all of our circuits labeled here. Looks like we have one unlabeled here. Um, it looks like everything else is labeled as it should be. We check our um, amperage on our main disconnect. That's just one of the things we put in the report. Um, according to the SOP, it says you are supposed to line out what amperage the panel is. Um, and then if you feel comfortable, I, I personally take the dead front covers off and check the inside of the panel. Um, according to the SOP, you do not have to. So I always like to start on this upper left side on the panel, um, leaving this screw over here for last, kind of helps hold the panel in place while you're taking it off. top of the panel so it doesn't fall once you get these last couple screws out. I have to hold the door, grab the bottom of the panel, and then lift it away so that it can't fall into any wiring. So it does look like our this 220 line here is improperly ran. Uh, so we'll put that in our report. Make sure we recommend that they have an electrician come out and evaluate that. Add an arrow in there, just kind of pointing out what it is. Yeah, so then interior of the picture, or the electrical panel, um, basically looking for installation defects, so any double tapped breakers, um, any double tap neutrals, um, wires crossing over the bus bar. Um, there's a lot to look in the electric panel. Um, InterNACHI's electrical course pre can prepare you really well for looking at the inside of a panel. Um, basically lines out everything you should be looking for when you're in here. Um, other than this here, I don't see any other defects in this panel, so we'll go ahead and close it up and move on to the kitchen. So here in the kitchen, we're going to start on the, um, I usually start with the dishwasher is where I start. Um, this one has dishes in it, so I won't run that. Um, I've found over experience that sometimes you can damage people's dishes and then they do not 
like that very much. But you can still check it for installation, make sure it's secured to the cabinet, make sure your seal's good, um, racks operate properly. Um, we just won't run it today. Um, and then underneath, you also wanna check the drain, make sure the drain is installed correctly. Um, there's no evidence of leaking underneath. Um, it does get a little difficult when you have objects in here um, because of course you can't see under there. So I usually pop a picture in there of any vision restrictions that we have. Um, Cause if all this comes out and that bottom's completely rotten, your client might say, hey, you missed this, but um, obviously I couldn't see it. But if it's in the report, then it shows that I couldn't see in there. Uh, looks like we got our control for our garbage disposal here. Yeah, so here for our sink, one of these rubber flappers, works really well, fits a bunch of different types of drains. Uh, so we'll just pop on our water. I usually do it on hot. Um, this is also where I test the water heater for functionality, partially, because if the, uh, we wanna make sure we get good hot water, but not too hot. Uh, so again, think, thinking of that safety for the occupants. If they have little kids or elderly people, they can get become scalded by extremely hot water very easily. And um, we'll check our sprayer, make sure the hose is in good condition and it's functional. Edge of the sink, we wanna make sure that the seal between the sink and the countertop is intact. Um, Cause that can be a spot where water can get down in there if that seal isn't proper. So after that, next thing I move over to is the dish, our uh, refrigerator. Just take a standard picture of that guy there. Um, just looking overall, physical condition, um, any dents or dings I'd put in my report. Little tiny ones like this I wouldn't put in there. It's pretty minor. Um, check the door operation. Checking all the door seals, make sure we're getting a good seal. Uh, looks like we have an ins ice maker in there too, which is what I have this little collapsible cup. It's actually a dog bowl. That's what I use it for, for checking the ice maker and the water dispenser. Make sure we got good functionality on both of those. Get some ice. Looks like that's working. And then this cup of ice water I use to test the microwave as well. Uh, so I'll run it in the microwave and make sure that it melts some of that ice just to ensure that we're getting microwaves produced in here. So and run that. Always fun to try and figure out all the different buttons. So I'll let that run for a minute and hopefully it melts that ice showing that we got a working microwave. And then I kind of bounce around a little bit and I come back to the refrigerator and I'll use my infrared thermometer to check again, make sure we've got the proper temperature in the refrigerator as well as in the freezer. Ensure our unit's cooling properly. One thing I learned is to hold these drawers with your foot or else some of them will close by themselves. And then by now our water should be hot. I'll go ahead and take a reading on that guy as well. So it looks like we are a little over the recommended level. 124 degrees is what we recommend. Um, looks like we're sitting at 132, 134. So I will put that in there as scalding temperature. It sounds like our microwave finished. Hop back over to our microwave and check and make sure that ice melted. It did. Picture. So our ice water now is just warm water. So that means our microwave is functional. They also have microwave testers. Um, you can get, I left a couple in microwaves, so I don't have one currently. Then I'll hop onto our microwave, check our vent fan, make sure that's operating. It seems like a vented model, so it's venting outside which we checked the exhaust on that when we were doing the outside portion. Make sure our surface light is working properly and our filters are in place on the bottom of the microwave unit. So then when I come up to the oven, I to open it up and check the door seal here. Make sure we're intact, don't have any fraying or anything on it. As well as check the light while we've got the door open. And I will test all of our burners as well. Make sure they're all right. Check and make sure our oven's getting warm there. 
We always put in, um, we call them CYA photos, uh, just showing that it did get warm, so that if two months down the road, the oven stops working, it was working at the time of the inspection. Then we'll let that broiler turn on, put their griddle back. And one thing I always try and do is leave the home in the exact same condition you found it when you get here. Um, you don't wanna come home and you left their griddle on their counter, it's not gonna make the homeowner very happy. The broiler hasn't started up yet. And so here in our kitchen, we also have a number of GFCI outlets here. Uh, so we'd again use our tester, get down in the garage, test those for functionality, make sure they test and reset. And we had one more over here as well. Um, usually if they, have, if they have stuff plugged in there, I'll just use the test and reset buttons on the actual outlet rather than unplugging people's stuff. Last thing I check in the kitchen is I'll check all of the cabinets, making sure all the doors operate properly, all the drawers operate smoothly, not shaking around, loose hinges, anything like that, as well as any physical damage to the doors or drawers. Um, and looking at the counter and also the seal between the counter and the backsplash, um, especially behind sinks, but pretty much everywhere. So a little bit of minor cracking there. Um, so I put that in my report. Um, just because if water gets back in there, it travels behind the cabinets. So that's a good area to keep sealed. And then next after this, I basically you just start one direction or the other. Um, I recommend picking one direction and then kind of sticking with it so that you always do the same thing every time, um, which just decreases the chance that you're gonna miss a whole room even sometimes or a window, whatever. As long as you go in the same direction, each level, each time, then there's a less of a chance that you'll miss things, which is more consistent. So we'll start here with this window. So we unlocked here. So with windows, we're checking installation when I first walk up, making sure we have a good seal. Window looks plumb. Check it for operation, make sure there's a good intact screen on it. And also ensure that the locks work and actually lock the window. Uh, so basically checking the installation of the um, sliding door, making sure we don't have any big cracks around the edges. Um, then we'll test the door, make sure that it slides fully and easily. As well as checking the screen, I check that during the outside portion so that when I'm inside, I just check the inside of the door. I'll engage the lock to make sure the lock holds the door. Handles nice and tight, not loose. Yeah, that's it for that guy. And then one big thing with sliding doors too, if, especially if they have mats, is pull them back and look right in here in the inside of the door. A lot of times you'll find water damage right inside the door because they left the door open and rain got in or tracking snow in and out. Um, so that's a good area to pay close attention to. And it looks like we got a fixed window here. It's basically the same thing as a regular window, but we don't test it for operation, of course. Um, and one big thing, you want to look for any cloudiness, especially on the larger windows, because there's a seal between the two panes. And if that fails, you'll get condensation in between them and it starts to get really cloudy. This one looks great though. All right, move on to the fireplace. All right, so here we have a, it's like a direct vent gas fireplace here. This one's already running. Um, so if it's easily turn onable, this one's um, switch controlled. So it has an electric ignite pilot. Um, those are really easy. You just flip a switch, it turns on. Um, some of them you'll have, the pilot will be shut off, gas will be shut off, any of that. And I just recommend having a fireplace person come and check the fireplace. Because you start turning valves and stuff, creating gas leaks, and it could open up a whole can of worms. So if there's gases off, anything like that, we just recommend a fireplace person. Uh, outlets, another fixed window here. Um, and when we have personal objects in front of windows, I just try and get as much vision as I can on the window. Um, of course, I'm not pulling this thing out to try and look at the window. 
I'm gonna see what I can. Um, and then I'll take a picture from further back showing that the window was partially blocked. So again, that vision restriction, just like under our sink. And we have an outlet here. I'm gonna check our outlet with our tester, which also does wiring. So it'll tell me that that outlet is wired correctly. Um, then one thing we use flashlights big for, checking corners for cracks. Um, also, just kind of waving and across the ceiling. Sometimes you can see a moisture stain that you wouldn't be able to see with your naked eye. I just like to check the whole ceiling with that. Another outlet here. It's going in that big circle. Looks like this outlet is a little loose in the wall. Make a short little video of that guy. Okay, so here in our living room, we have a loose outlet wiggling inside the box. It's tightened up. There you go, video in our report there. Um, it's a pretty minor issue, but it would still let the client know because it's something that needs to get fixed. So now here we got a floor outlet. So another use for your screwdriver here, taking off these covers. Our tester in there. Looks like it's wired properly. One big thing I see with these a lot is they'll be missing these covers. Um, that can allow dirt, water, and foreign objects to enter into the outlet and cause a problem. So if you ever see these covers missing, I call that out. Right. So we'll move into this bedroom here. All right, so checking our bedroom here. Looks like the master bedroom, most likely. Let's check door for operation. I just do it when I first come through it. Make sure our door is nice and plumb on all the sides, locks functional, and that it closes and opens easily. Check our door stop, make sure we're not hitting the wall. Um, that's a good area to check for drywall damage too, is right here behind doorknobs. A lot of times you'll see holes there. And then basically, same kind of loop that I do throughout the home, I do in each room as well. So I start going to the uh, counterclockwise, is the way I go. Um, as long as it's consistent. Right there. And then same thing, bigger windows. Just a bigger version of the smaller window. So we do all the same checks. Again, looking for cloudiness, anything, operation. Checking fans, looks like it's spinning well. Any kind of wobbling or anything I would put in a report because it can be a safety issue. And with occupied rooms, I always like to take a picture of where the furniture was because um, behind this bed, there's a, a portion of the wall that I can't see because there could be a big hole back there and there's no way to tell. And so I take a picture of that, put it in the report. Again, those CYA pictures that could become useful later. All right, there we go. Move into the bedroom, our bathroom. So again, looking at the white light up at the ceiling, which looks like we got one little defect there, which I didn't see with my naked eye. It looks like a minor drywall damage. That's why I use the light, catch little imperfections like that. Kitchen, bathroom. In the bathroom, I like to fill up all of the plumbing, all the way up to the overflows on sinks and then tubs. I usually fill about halfway just to get a good amount of water flowing through that plumbing. So if it does leak, I want it to leak while I'm here. And then also checking for a pressure drop. So with all of these um, fixtures running at the same time, if we had a low pressure situation, then you would see the, like the sink start to dribble. Uh, but this looks good. With four fixtures running and it's still running perfectly fine. And let's check the bathroom. And then while these run, I'll check the rest of the bathroom as well as any closets that are attached to anything like that. Lights, doors, everything. 
And then I like to flush the toilet. Um, my goal is five times I flush it. Just to make sure, check it for tightness to the floor. Um, and then check any vent fans that we have as well. Just ensure they're not really loud and that they operate properly. So we'll flush our toilet twice while we're in there. And then again, checking doors for function. Door stoppers, looking for damage. And then here in the bathrooms, we're going to have GFCIs near the sinks. I'm going to trip it. And it trips somewhere else in the house, so we'll have to find that. Make sure that we get power back to their outlets for them. So we got our sinks full. Now I do hot. Uh, make sure the hot's working. Turn on the cold. And make sure that they're not backwards. Sometimes you'll see that. They'll plumb them the wrong way. And then drain them. Use your flashlight and look underneath. Make sure we don't have any dripping. Uh, make sure everything's installed well and we don't have any damage on the bottom of the cabinet. And do the same thing for this one. Good. I always like to make sure that they drain fast as well. You get a lot of hair clogs in bathroom sinks especially, so um, make sure that they're not draining really slow. And then check right where the tub meets any tile or whatever the material is, right around the edges is a good place to look for cracking. I see a lot of caulking and grout that cracks right at those joints, especially switching materials. And then we'll check for the same thing in the shower. All the edges, definitely hot, nice and steamy in there. So we're checking all the edges. That's definitely where you see the most cracking is in corners and edges. Looks like we got a little bit of cracking down there in that corner. I'm just gonna put that in. Should turn the shower off first so I don't get wet. That in plumbing section. So there in the corner. Seems to work. Of course, now I lost my tag. And that's a pretty common maintenance thing. Um, be one of the most common things I find is caulking around uh, tubs and showers. And then also on the floor, we're looking for any defects in the tile, linoleum, carpet, whatever you may have. Um, this looks really good, especially outside of showers and tubs. Um, there's a lot of water there, so you want to make sure there's no damage right in front of those. Pretty good. it's working properly. And then next we'll move to the front of the home. All right, so here we have the home's thermostat. So we're gonna go ahead, it's too cold today to test the AC, but we'll test the furnace. Um, one easy thing I like to do with the thermostat is turn it up 10 degrees and then back down 10 degrees. So you don't ever have to try and remember, was it set at 72 or 73? You're just up 10, down 10. So it's always the same, a um, little bit of consistent. Again, that consistency helps with everything. So while we're letting that heat up, we'll move here into the laundry room. Um, so if we had an agent here, I would ask them if the washer and dryer are staying. If they are, we do test them. Um, if I don't know, I don't usually test them, especially if there's clothes inside. So one good thing, test. We do have clothes in the washer, so I won't test that. Um, we have clothes in the dryer as well. So um, even if they are staying, I wouldn't test them because those are the occupants belongings and I don't want to damage them. We have outlet here. Check our outlet just like most outlets we check. We grab a flashlight. Look behind both units. See if we have any water leaking, anything like that, any evidence of water leaking. 
Those look good back there. Make sure our dryer vents installed well, which it was. Uh, modern construction requires a drain by the washer and dryer. Um, if it's on, in an area that could cause damage. So we do have a basement underneath us. So there should be a drain. I don't see one. Um, it's probably under one of the units though. Uh, so checking our door. Also check the garage door from this side. That's our door to the garage. Doesn't look like we have any damage. A lot of times you'll see dog damage on the trim, um, little things like that. Looks like we do have weather stripping that's not quite meeting. We've got some daylight coming through from the garage. So I'd point that out because you're losing, uh, getting cold air coming in through there. That's it for the laundry room. So move on. And so anytime you see a missing door stop, definitely be paying close attention to that drywall. So there's nothing to stop that door from hitting the wall. Doesn't look like we have any damage there, but I would put in that that door stops missing. And then check our front door. Our operation of our deadbolt handle. Make sure the door closes and seals all the way around. That looks good. And check the lights here, hall light here. And then we have a timer light for the outside. Um, I don't usually alter the timers because um, I want to leave it set however they had it set. Um, this one says press door for manual on off. So you can push it to turn the lights on and check the lights outside. Um, outlet there. Um, I don't unplug items from outlets to test them. If they're fully occupied, then I can't test that outlet. All right. So checking our first bedroom here in the hallway. Check our door for operation. Looks like we're missing a door stop here. We do have a protector on the wall there, so if that door hits it, uh, there could be a hole behind there, but we're not gonna pull that and check. Uh, checking our switches, looks like we already got our fan on. So again, checking for any wobbling, safety issues with that. And then just start our loop. Looking around. Looks like we got a window here. Uh, one thing with these thicker blinds, when I lift them up, I always try and support them from the bottom. Because a lot of times you'll pull on it and it'll pull the whole blind out of the cradle on the top. Check our window functionality, installation, and ensure those locks work. And I always try and put their blind back however they had it. We got one outlet back over here, okay. And then now that our furnace has started to work up, or started to heat up, one of the things I do is use my infrared thermometer again, and get a sight uh, reading on the heat vent that's back here behind this chair. Just to kind of prove that we've got heating source in every room. Next. Ceiling again. It's good. It's a heat vent here. Check our closet doors. Looks like we have a little bit of minor damage here. Looks like they were rubbing at some point maybe. Um, so I would put that in, probably just needs repainted. Uh, but good thing to let your client know. And check on sliding closet doors. They're supposed to have what's called a bypass guide here on the bottom. Uh, little pieces of plastic that stop the door from being able to swing out. Because if these doors swing out, they can come off the track. So, pretty important little safety thing to have on there. Also keeps the doors from rubbing against each other. Put that back how it was. And then, at some point we'll test the smoke and carbon monoxide. I usually wait until one I can reach without getting my ladder. Um, if there's not, then I would set my ladder up and push that test button and get those to go off. Let's get 
there. And keep moving in our loop. Lights. And it looks like we have a guest bath here. So check our door on the way in. I think we have a timer for our fan, so we're going to kick that guy on. And then looks like this is our GFCI that we tripped from the master here. So it'll be tripped. Then make sure we reset that guy so we have power back in the master bathroom. And then we'll just start our sinks, toilets, tub. wait for those to fill up. And while those are filling, we can check our window there that we've got in our shower, um, check our ceiling, make sure our fan is functional, check our countertops, flooring, and then we can get a reading on this heat register as well here in the bathroom. That guy on. Flush our toilet again. So it looks like we may have had a pass leak down here. A little bit of discoloration around the water supply there. Um, so I would put that in as a past leak. Uh, it looks like it's dry right now, um, but that doesn't mean it couldn't start leaking again. Uh, there also may be some damage to the bottom of the cabinet there. Then we'll check around the base of our toilet as well for any kind of pass leaking. Flush her a few more times, make sure it's flushing well. I should make sure the seat is tight as well. And looking at our shower, looks like we have that same cracking there in the corner again. So I'll put that in the report. Um, that's really common, especially with grout. Drain that guy, and check our shower. Be working well. No leaking, everything's nice and tight. Put that grout in there. Got our arrow kind of pointing it out. Flashlight on the ceiling here. I think that brings us to the end of this floor. So now we'll move down to the basement and start on that level. Starting to move downstairs. Let's check on our handrails, tightness and safety. Yeah, a little wiggle there. We wanna make sure our handrails are nice and tight. Here's a little wiggle there too. Light up there, lights down here. Perfect. Right. And then again down here in the basement, so I just start on this wall, kind of follow our um, counterclockwise, skipping the utility room because I saved that for last. So let's start going this way. Closet, light in there. Not much to check if these are finished. If it was unfinished, then you can check the structure of the stairs. Keep moving this way. Come in. We got our first bedroom downstairs here. Check our door as we come in. Make sure it locks and opens functionally. Uh, looks like we got a basketball hoop there preventing the door from opening. Another guard there, plus a door stops. So we're good there. Our 
Go to our closet door here. It's working properly. Check our closet door, bypass guides in place. Doors operating properly. Let's try and look under desks. Cause sometimes you'll have some damage on the drywall under there. Pretty rare, but it can be. And with windows like this, with furniture in front of them, I try and get to them if I can. Um, obviously not climbing onto the people's furniture, but if you can reach over it, that's fine. Make sure your lock is good. And one thing to check in here too is your escape ladder. Um, make sure it's there, present, and secured to the window well. Um, also any debris or anything, um, that's a pretty minor amount of debris, but if it's a lot, like a ton of leaves or a ton of trash, then I would call that out. Again, check our ceiling again. And then I'll move on to the next room. Let's keep following our line here. Melt it there. It's actually checked on the way in, but uh, just to maintain consistency, I'll check it again. So we have some minor drywall damage. Nothing big, more cosmetic than anything. I'd probably put it in a minor note about it. And then here, check our door. It's there. Get that. Check that guy. Come in, next closet door. I like it's another good use for the flashlight is checking the ceilings in closets. Um, sometimes you can't really control where a water leak could be, so it could easily be on the ceiling of a closet. Without using your flashlight, you won't be able to see that. Doors for function. Looks like on this window we are missing a screen. So if they put that in there. But people like to leave their windows open. Don't want bugs in their house. Take a picture of that guy. Checking sure the lock works. Ladder's in place and secured. Um, one thing I did put in from the outside that you can see here is there's no covers on the window wells, which we do recommend for safety. Uh, so nobody falls into the window well or baby rabbits. Okay. Nice, thank you. Yeah, there's a good one. So there's a, in here actually is a smoke detector that I can reach easily. So that's probably the one I'll pick to check. And if you can't quite reach it, screwdriver, they're used for it. I'll push and hold to test. Some of them are push and there we go. So motorhomes, they are hardwired together. So I'm testing this one and I can hear all the others going off. So we don't need to individually test all of the hardwired ones. That's good, I move into this room. So coming into our basement bathroom here. Lights on, check our fan. Make sure it's functioning properly. Their outlet here, tested it. We know that resets up there in that guest bathroom. So just kind of make a mental note to reset that. We also have a checklist at the end um, where that's one of the things that we check off that all the GFCIs are working. Now looking at our counter, fill up our sink here, we'll move over to the toilet and give her a flush. I always like to put just a little bit of pressure to the sides, check it for any movement. That one looks good. Turn the shower on. And we'll check our door. Operating properly. All right, fixture's nice and tight. Got a hot and cold foam correctly. There's a drainer. Looks like it's draining well. Now I'll check underneath for leaks.
and no apparent. And then we make a video of each um, where we're doing an actual inspection. Okay, good. We make a video of each fixture. Um, and then I also say on the video that there's no apparent leaking at the time of the inspection because there could be a leak that you don't see or didn't see or is behind something. Toilet, shower's running. Looks okay, like we got. Okay. So checking under the sink here. Any leaks? Installation defects? Any evidence of past leaking? We got a little bubble there, but that's most likely for something that spilled, not an actual leak. Doesn't look like a water stain. Take our shower, open up all our tile. Corners are cracked again. It's like pretty much every shower has that in the corner. Grout cracked up there. That's really common, happens about a year after grout was installed. back up. And I like to leave shower curtains and shower doors the way they were when I found them. And then last bedroom down here. Check our door. Is that guy? So, a basketball hoop here is preventing the door from closing, so I don't force it. Um, window missing a screen on this one as well. I'll make a comment on those two missing screens. Check our lock and ladder. Missing a cover on this one as well. Picture that window. And looking at ceilings. Staining. Then we'll get a reading on our heat register as well. Yeah, so here at the closet, again checking doors, bypass guide, operation of the doors, looks good. Flashlight, ceiling up in there, looks good. Partially closed. Right. And the last thing we got is the utility room, which we skipped earlier, so move on to there. Right up this way, perfect. All right, so we got our utility room, which we saved for last. Let's check our door here. And you'll find the utility room is one of the only places where you'll have usually exposed wiring and stuff, so you can check for installation of boxes, wiring, which gives you a good idea of the workmanship of the rest of the home. Um, as well as checking, make sure you got your floated walls um, in the modern basements. And so I usually pick whatever appliance is first. If the water heater is first, I do that first. If the furnace is first, I do that first. All right, so our water heater here, checking mostly installation. Um, check and make sure our hot and cold water here is plumbed correctly. Um, looking all around our flue, we got exhaust gases going through here. So we have carbon monoxide or potential carbon monoxide coming into the home if this is not venting properly. So any indication that this isn't venting properly, I'd recommend it for evaluation. Uh, just looking at the overall condition of the tank. There's a temperature and pressure relief valve. This is one of the safety features on the water heater. So if the temperature gets too high, creates too much pressure, this opens up and lets some water out to prevent the water tank from exploding, basically. So definitely want to check this guy. Commonly, these will start leaking, so you'll see water stains underneath them or an active drip. Either one of those situations needs to get repaired. Um, here you can check your temperature setting here. So when we were up in the kitchen, we noticed that this was a little hot. So one of my recommendations would be turning this guy down. Um, 
and I'm comfortable showing my clients how to turn this down themselves. Um, you may want to recommend a plumber if you're not comfortable using a water heater. Uh, one other thing I check is the manufacture date on the water heater and then compare that to the building department because um, where we are, the authority having jurisdiction says that you're supposed to permit all water heaters. So if this wasn't permitted, I would let my clients know that it was put in without a permit. Uh, the next thing I'd move on to the furnace. Um, and also while I'm looking this whole room, I'm always checking like um, studs for any cracking, installation of the wires, gas lines being properly supported. Um, everything like that. It looks like our missing screens from those windows might be right here. So I'd probably point that out to our client that we do have some screens down here and they may or may not fit. Uh, so taking a look at overall of our furnace with a modern uh, high efficiency furnace. Sometimes you'll see water stains around the flues because this is a condensing furnace. So you have condensation coming back to the furnace through these tubes. So you can see a lot of leaking here um, as well as checking for rust inside because if you have a leak in the condensation fluid could leak inside the furnace and damage it. And I go ahead and open up the main burner panel here. And we do have the furnace on. Oh, it sounds like it just kicked off. Yep. So I usually look right here in the furnace. Um, this one looks like it has a good coating of dust in there. Um, so I would probably recommend a clean and service on this furnace. Uh, that's probably three quarters of the furnaces I recommend a clean and service on. Uh, this is that flue that I was talking about. So come down here, you've got a condensation drain line running right through here. This is a good area to check for any kind of leaking or anything like that. If you see any rust or anything underneath there, then that could be leaking which could cause severe damage over time. One thing here too, we've got our control board on more modern furnaces. Um, any kind of scorching on the, scor the circuit board, um, definitely want to call that out because it's shortened lifespan on the circuit board there. Here's more of our condensation drain line, so another place to check for leaks. Goes into our drain tube here and goes to this uh, floor drain. Here, we'll open our filter door. And then one thing with the blower, you can get it out easily. Let's check our filter, very clean. And then you can also, when you have the filter out, check down inside your filter compartment down there. It's pretty good. Again, checking for water leaks. And then we'll reassemble the furnace. And then when I get both of the covers back on, I like to either turn the furnace up and make sure that it comes back on. I just heard it kick back on there, just to ensure that we don't leave them without heat. If we didn't get that panel cover back on, that switch isn't engaged, then the furnace could not turn on. Um, it would not be good. Another thing we check here. So there's a humidistat here. This controls a humidifier, so it tells me there's a humidifier somewhere. It looks like it's actually on the back side of the unit. We do have a humidifier here, usually an access panel and check the pad inside. Sometimes they have a lot of mineral deposit buildup on them Then I recommend changing the pad. Um, water line going to it, so checking any leaks there and as well as a drain line, check that for leaks as well. Um, and then the whole utility room, I look at insulation on the foundation walls, make sure it's intact. And then also looking up into the floor structure Make sure none of the trusses have been altered in any way. Um, no evidence of leaking, anything like that. And then also with our sewer stacks, if we were going to do a sewer scope, that'd be our clean out right there that we perform that through. Um, and also check the whole meter. Um, a lot of times you'll get leaks off the bottom of the pressure reducing valve. So you'll see water stains on the floor there. Um, make sure your entrance is good, no leaking, no corrosion, anything like that on any portion of that. And that's about it for the utility room. Um, yeah, pretty good. So now I'd usually take my clients down here and I usually like to do what's called a utility room tour. So I'll show them the main water shut off. I'll show them where their furnace filter is, um, how to control their humidifier, where their pad is, uh, what to check on their water heater. It's really easy for a homeowner. If they see dripping under here, just let them know they need to call a plumber. Um, also, 
a lot of people want to know where their communications box is, which is what this is. Um, we don't check any of that because that's low volt, but a lot of people want to know where it is. Um, and then, yeah, and then I would go through what we call a summary. So I go through all of the defects that I found, make sure they don't have any questions, um, see if they want to walk to anything that I can show them in person if they weren't here for the whole inspection. Um, a lot of times, about half and half clients will show up at the end or follow you the whole time, um, or they don't come at all. Um, then we usually do a phone review. So we'll go over, get the report to them, let them look at it, and then go over everything that answer any questions they have. And thanks for joining me on the interior portion of this inspection. Um, I think we found some good things we're gonna point out to our client. Uh, that's one of the biggest things about having a home inspection is catching all the items that could cost you a lot of money down the road. Uh, it's also one of the gratifying things about being a home inspector is being able to point those things out to uh, home buyers, uh, saving them money, potentially saving their family's life if it's that big of an issue. Um, I'm Ryan Lewis with Top Choice Inspectors, and I'll see you on the next one.